I've just finished my first weekend with the Prusa Mini, but not everything went as expected. I have here in my possession a brand new Prusa Mini. I think I ordered it around a day after the announcement and I guess a lot of other people did too because I went in the queue and it's taken this long to be delivered. You might be wondering why would I spend my money on this when I'm surrounded by many 3D printers that I've been sent for review. To answer that, let me tell you a little story about this, the Prusa Mark III. Last year, as my F1 in schools team was preparing to take on the world finals, the need arose for me to lend one of them a 3D printer so they could make all of their parts before the deadline. I looked around the room, filled with 3D printers, but the choice was obvious, this Mark III. This is a printer where all of the software could be downloaded, including a slicer and pre-made slicing profiles, so a new user wouldn't have to worry about learning that. This printer has fail safes and essential safety features, as well as a removable spring seal sheet, so I didn't have to worry about anyone cutting their hand with a scraper. This printer also comes with ABL, and yes, you can 3D print without it, but for a new user, printing at home for the first time, it was just going to be so much easier. This printer is also capable of printing with a range of different filaments, so therefore the team could experiment as they sell fit to come up with the best solution. So my experience with Prusa printers is that while they're not perfect, they're pretty well developed, quite polished, and they make life easy for the user. So when this new one was announced, I was very happy to spend my money and make the order. In this video, we're going to unbox it, assemble it, and look at the overall user experience, and then do some test prints. So let's get started by opening this thing up. Unboxing over, so before we assemble, some initial impressions. Before we even look at the printer parts, let's talk about this. This is all of the foam packaging for the entire printer. Best of all, it says it's fully recyclable. With the huge rise in 3D printing over the last five or so years, there's gonna be a lot of waste packaging going through the world, so it's good to know at least one company is trying to do the right thing. Next, we have some good paperwork here. We have a list of resources, where to go to find things online. We've got this really nice 3D printing handbook. Once again, very beginner friendly, but by far one of the most important things here is this slip. It is concrete evidence of quality control. All of the electronics have been tested, including the hot end and heated bed. When we look at the actual components, once again, everything is labeled really nicely and we even have QR codes. So I assume we can go online to find out more details. I'm gonna assemble it now, but one more thing to point out, it comes like the bigger Mark III with a bag of these gummy bears so you can enjoy them while you put your printer together. Assembly complete and it takes me a little bit longer because I'm filming but I think it's about a 10 to 15 minute job. Highlights include only a single allen key and four bolts on the printer and only eight bolts for the filament holder. I only have very minor complaints. The first being some parts were a little bit fiddly such as aligning the first T-nut. The second being putting the little cover on to hold the cables in the right place. My other complaint is the feet. I found this addition for an updated version of this printer and I put the feet where it says, but it's still a little bit wobbly. I know there's printed feet available online, so I'll probably add those at some stage. 
Now you would have noticed I opted for two extras, the first being the filament runout sensor, the second being the textured PEI coated sheet, as well as the original PEI sticker sheet. Now here we have the USB flash drive. I know there's meant to be software and firmware on that. So we're gonna plug it into the computer and then head to the website to make sure we got the latest of everything. I know after this was shipped, a new firmware update came out. The flash drive is in. We have what I think is a firmware file and then a range of G-code files to do test prints with. Let's see if there's a more up-to-date version of the firmware on the website. So on the Prusa website, we have the latest firmware as well as the drivers and apps. And I've downloaded both of those. So let's do the initial setup. When we open Prusa Slicer, we have this wizard to get us started. I've got the Prusa Mini. I also have the original Prusa Mark III. So I'm going to tick that as well. And now I'm going to click Next. I don't have an SO1 and I'll stick with the default settings for now. As we can see, we get a graphic of the build platform that really helps you understand the scale of what you're importing and which way it's facing. And more importantly, we have a bunch of pre-made presets. For a new user, it really makes life easy. But as you get more experienced, you can, of course, edit these and save your own custom ones. As for the firmware, here's the zip file. I'm going to simply drag it to the flash drive and then delete the old one. The new firmware file is on the flash drive, which is in the machine. So I think I'm ready to turn it on for the first time. It's immediately offering us the option of upgrading the firmware. So we'll go to flash, press the button. And now that process is underway. We can hear the printer has gone silent and it's offering us the starting wizard. So we're definitely going to do that. It's talking us through the interface, really nice touch. And now it's going to run the self test to make sure the printer is still working as it should be. All of the physical movements have been checked. So we can see now it's heating up the hot end as well as the bed to make sure those are working correctly. Fast forward a couple of minutes and we are done. So we can click the button and now it's going to guide us through first layer calibration and we have no filament. So we're going to follow the prompts to load some. The printer comes with two samples and we're going to go with the green for our first test print. With that initial loading, we can confirm that it's working. So now we're going to calibrate the first layer. It's going to heat everything up and then draw a pattern. We're going to turn the dial back and forth to make the nozzle up and down to get the perfect amount of squish for our first layer. So what it's doing now is probing the bed with the pinned probe, just like a BL touch does, building up a mesh so it knows the exact geometry of the bed, whether that's flat or whether that's curved. So I can see mine is a little bit too high. So I'm going to turn it to move it down. I think I'm pretty much in the ballpark at minus 0 0.8, 0 0.9. And once it gets to the end of the pattern, it does a solid section. And that's really good because we can see the individual extrusions of the infill, make sure there's no gaps in between them. We're all done. I'm happy with how my first layer is looking. So I'm going to go to no, click the button and that is now saved and the wizard should be complete. Now this screen kind of looks like a touch screen, but it's not. The encoder wheel is quite nice to use. We're going to do our first test print and I've seen on here there is a 3D Benchy. So why not start with that? Okay, test prints over and I say prints because it should have been one, but it didn't go that smoothly. This 3D Benchy came detached once. So I lowered the nozzle a little bit with the live offset, happened again. And then finally it happened a third time when it was really close to the end. I'll let it cool down. I'll give it a clean and I'll probably move it even closer still. So far, it still looks promising. I've got some more sample filament to use here as well as my own filament from X3D. So I'm going to spend the weekend printing and then report back on Monday. I'm back. The weekend has come and gone. It's Monday and as promised, I've done a bunch of printing. Now you might have noticed in the first half of the video, I was very enthusiastic about this. My expectations were sky high. Unfortunately, it hasn't really gone as planned for the most part. So let's talk through what happened. Firstly, I cleaned the bed with isopropyl alcohol and reprinted the Benchy. This time it completed, but if you look at the surface, you can see that it's got some missed extrusions. I continued with the pre-sliced G-code on the USB flash drive and printed the sheep. This one has really suffered from an intermittently clogging nozzle. It's got big horizontal gaps and it's quite weak. 
Next, I printed the little pug and it suffered from the same issue, although not as bad. Overall, the shape is there, but it's still littered with patches where the plastic wasn't extruding properly. When trying to start prints like the whistle or the tree frog, I couldn't get them to go more than about a minute before the whole thing would jam, so I had to start pulling it apart to investigate. During printing, I noticed some clicking, and when I lifted the little cap, I could see a lot of filament building up on the hob gear. I jumped online, found a knowledge base article about this problem, and followed the steps in that article to no avail. If the extruder is tensioned properly, but it's still digging into the filament, then something further down the chain must be blocked, so I disassembled the hot end. This wide blob of filament here tells you exactly what the problem is, so let me talk you through it. This is a very simplified view of the Mini's hot end, particularly around the fitting which has multiple parts. If we look inside, we can see that this is not an all metal hot end, instead it has a PTFE liner. It's not necessarily a problem if everything is sized correctly, the filament has nowhere else to go but down through the liner and out the nozzle. The problem comes, like in my case, if the PTFE liner is just a little bit too short. Even if it starts against the nozzle, the first time the printer retracts, it's going to slide up and create a gap that molten filament is going to fill, and when it tries to extrude again, that wider blob of filament has nowhere to go and obviously something's going to jam. In my attempts to fix this, I reseated the nozzle heater block and did a hot tighten. I also changed over to the included spare piece of PTFE tube, but the problem persisted. The only way I could fix it was when I swapped to a longer piece of tube. After I fixed this, the intermediate under extrusion went away and I didn't have any more failed prints. I printed the whistle pre-sliced G-code, seems to work like you'd expect. I printed the pre-sliced nut and bolt, and this one is immensely satisfying to play with and a pretty impressive print. I then switched over to some green and printed the tree frog, which is also on the flash drive. This print coming out fairly well also. My nephew stayed over on the weekend and they're soon to receive their first 3D printer, so the eldest one was excited to pick out this flash model. It's printed in ultra glossy X3D smooth PLA. The filament looks stunning, but it does help show up some vertical banding present the whole way along the print. This and my remaining prints were done in Prusa Slicer, using the 0.2mm quality PLA presets. The sparkling galaxy black filament that came from Prusa was pretty nice, but I had my own X3D sparkling PLA, so I loaded it up and printed some cool models. Firstly, this warrior statue is really cool form. It prints without support, and it's just really interesting to pick up and look at with the missing sections through the body. This vampire castle is a really nice paid model from my mini factory. All of the details printed well, but as you can see, it suffered from pretty excessive stringing, and stringing was something I found throughout my test prints, regardless of the filament or whether I sliced the G-code myself or got it from the flash drive. I thought I'd finished with some more real world prints, so I chose some poly panel triangles from Make Anything, and I printed out a 3x3 plate. They look beautiful and clean, and they snap together nicely, but the fit is definitely a lot looser than those I've printed before, using a different slicer and printer combination. Finally, I printed a prototype part, destined for the Monoprice Mini Delta, Dimensionally, it seems very accurate, matching the source piece very closely that I modeled it to replace. So that was the extent of my first weekend with the printer. My expectations were sky high and I'd be lying if I said I wasn't a little disappointed with the results so far. The stringing is something that can probably tuned out pretty easily in the slicer. The vertical banding, maybe not so easy to get rid of. I've also had a few firmware crashes when purging filament. I did manage to fix the clogging problem myself, but I really wasn't expecting to have to do anything like that with this printer. I know there's been a few other issues that I've read about. I guess this is a new product and there's going to be teething issues, but I'm still disappointed that I ordered mine like everyone else, waited for the queue, and after all of this time, some of these issues still haven't been addressed. One thing I'm confident in is the fact that Prusa will continue to develop and hopefully release fixes to some of these problems free of charge in the future. Have you got a Prusa Mini? Are you considering getting one? I'd love to read about your experiences down below in the comments. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, happy 3D printing. G'day, it's Michael again. If you liked the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe, and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.